Then, at approximately 1400 on January 7, 1948, the Kentucky State Police reported to the Fort Knox Military Police that they had sighted an unusual aircraft or object flying through the air, circular in appearance, approximately 200 to 300 feet in diameter, moving westward. The Provo Marshal at Fort Knox called the commanding officer at Godman Air Force Base. All flight service at Wright Field determine if they have any experimental aircraft in our area. We have a report of an unidentified aircraft south of the field. It was about 1315 when the tower controller in the Godman Tower received his instructions from the commanding officer. Right, Patterson. The PFC continued giving routine instructions to a light plane which was practicing takeoffs and landings. Flight service. Captain Hopper, flight service. Flight service is a clearinghouse. The positions of all military planes are carefully plotted so a minute to minute check may be made on their position, course, altitude, and speed. Flight service to Godman Tower. We have no experimental aircraft in that area. However, we do have a B-29 and an A-26 on photo mission in that area. In the meantime, Lieutenant Cowan, the AACS, and the operations officer had arrived in the tower. They were joined by the intelligence officer and the executive officer. Upon hearing the information from flight service, the executive officer called Colonel Hicks, the commanding officer. At about 1350, the tower controller saw an object south of Godman Field and directed it to the attention of the tower. Lieutenant Cowan was the first of the group, after the tower controller, to locate it. He immediately directed it to the attention of the operations officer. After observing it for a moment, he picked up a telephone and put in a second call to the commanding officer. While he was putting the call through, Colonel Hicks arrived in the tower. It was now about 1420. About 1430, a flight of four F-51s being ferried from Marietta, Georgia to Stanford Field, Kentucky, was sighted south of the base. The commanding officer issued an order to contact the flight leader. Godman Tower to leader, flight 451. Godman Tower to leader, flight 451. Come in. Captain Mantell, flight leader F-51 to Godman Tower. Over. Stand by for further instructions. Look at the plans for the area of the unknown. Vector Mantell on a heading of 210 degrees. Godman Tower to Captain Mantell. Come in, over. Mantell to Godman Tower. Over. Godman Tower to Captain Mantell. Investigate an unidentified object in your area. Your new course, 210 degrees. 210 degrees. Mantel to Godman Tower. Changing heading to 210. We'll go out. One of the ships in Mantel's formation, NG-336, piloted by Lieutenant Hendricks, requested permission to land at Stanford Field to refuel and get oxygen. Permission was granted. Captain Mantell and the other two planes started to climb toward the object. The second pilot made a similar request. Both wingmen refueled and, after getting oxygen equipment, took off again. Captain Mantell, flying NG-3869, continued climbing, outdistancing his wingmen. At 1445, Mantell called the tower. Mantell to tower. I see it. Above and ahead of me. I'm still climbing. A few moments later, one of Mantell's wingmen was hurt. What the hell are we looking for? After a moment, Captain Mantell made a reply. Mantell to tower. The object is directly ahead of and above me, now moving at half my speed. Godman Tower to leader, flight 451. Godman Tower to leader, flight 451. Come in. Mantell to tower. It appears to be a metallic object of tremendous size. The object now was in visual view of the tower personnel. Mantell to tower. I'm trying to close in for a better look. I'll go to 20,000 feet. Shortly after this, Pilot Hammond, the remaining wingman with Mantell, called Mantell over his radio. Level off, Captain, until I regain visual contact. The personnel in Godman Tower waited tensely for Mantell's reply, but he made no answer. A moment later, Pilot Hammond made another report to the tower. Mantell seemed to have disappeared. Mantell had apparently climbed beyond his wingman. At 1525, the remaining wingman broke off and returned to Stanford Field. The object, which was in visual sight from the tower, as were the F-51s during the chase, disappeared at approximately 1550. The F-51s were first lost to view, and then the object went behind a cloud. 
Badlin Power to Captain Mantell. Come in. Over. This is Badlin Power to Captain Mantell. Come in. Over. At 17.50, Staniford advised Godman Tower that Mantell had crashed five miles southwest of Franklin, Kentucky. The crash had occurred at approximately 16.45. Captain Mantell was killed. Statements were taken from all who were present in the tower during the Mantell sighting. The tower controller stated, It looks silver or metallic. The intelligence officer? It appeared to be a bright silver object. The executive officer? It was circular in shape. The AACS? A small white object in the sky. The operations officer? It appeared round and white. The commanding officer? It could be seen plainly with the naked eye. The statements were typed up for the necessary signatures as the interrogation concluded. There was one point on which there was some disagreement. Not everyone who had been present in the tower had heard Mantell when he reported over the radio that he was moving in for a better look. The more lurid sections of the press reported that fragments of Mantell's plane were found to be radioactive. Some news sources reported that an autopsy revealed that Mantell had been killed by some kind of death ray unknown to our men of science. These reports were false.
approximately 1400 on January 7, 1948, the Kentucky State Police reported to the Fort Knox Military Police that they had sighted an unusual aircraft or object flying through the air, circular in appearance, approximately 200 to 300 feet in diameter, moving westward. The Provo Marshal at Fort Knox called the commanding officer at Godman Air Force Base. All flight services at Wright Field determine if they have any experimental aircraft in our area. We have a report of an unidentified aircraft south of the field. It was about 1315 when the tower controller in the Godman Tower received his instructions from the commanding officer. Right, Patterson. The PFC continued giving routine instructions to a light plane which was practicing takeoffs and landings. Captain Hopper, Flight Service. Flight Service is a clearinghouse. The positions of all military planes are carefully plotted so a minute-to-minute -minute check may be made on their position, course, altitude, and speed. Flight Service to Godman Tower. We have no experimental aircraft in that area. However, we do have a B-29 and an A-26 on photo mission in that area. In the meantime,